Hey everybody, how's it going? In our last video, we looked at the difference between instance variables and class variables. And in this video, we'll be learning about the difference between regular methods, class methods, and static methods. And a lot of people get confused as to the difference between class methods and static methods, so we'll definitely go over that in detail. So as we learned in our previous videos, regular methods in a class automatically take the instance as the first argument. And by convention, we were calling this self. So if a regular method automatically takes in the instance as the first argument, then how can we change this so that it instead automatically takes the class as the first argument? Now to do that, we're going to use class methods. And to turn a regular method into a class method, uh, it's as easy as adding a decorator to the top called class method. So let's go ahead and create one of these. So I'm going to create a new method here with that class method decorator. And I'm just going to call this set raise amount. Now for this set raise amount method, uh, I'm going to take in the class and I'm going to take in an amount. And for now, we'll just put in a pass statement there. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how decorators work, then you can watch my video that goes into that in depth. But basically, this is altering the functionality of our method to where now we receive the class as our first argument instead of the instance. Now, by convention with a regular method, we called this instance variable self. And there's a common convention for class variables too, and that is CLS. Now we can't use the word class as the variable name here because the word has a different meaning within the language. You can see here at, up at the top that we use the word class uh, to create a new class. So that is a keyword in Python. So instead we're gonna use CLS as our class variable name. So now within this set raise amount method, we are working with the class instead of the instance. And to show you what I mean by this, let's go ahead and set our class variable raise amount. Uh, so we'll say class dot raise amount, and we'll just set this equal to the amount argument that we are accepting from this method. So now down here at the bottom, I still have these two employee instances that I created in our previous tutorials. And here I am printing out the classes raise amount as well as both instances raise amount. So if I go ahead and run this, then you can see that all of those are equal to 4%. Now the reason all those are equal to 4% again is because we have this class variable here, raise amount that is set to 4%. So now let's say that we wanted to change this to 5%. So before I print these out, then I could just use that raise, set raise amount method that we just created, and I could do employee dot set raise amount, and it automatically accepts the class, uh, so we don't have to pass that in. So now we can just pass in an amount. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, 5%, and if I save that and run it, then you can see that now all of these are equal to 5%. Now the reason all those are equal to 5% is because we ran this set raise amount method, which is a class method, which means that now we are working with the class instead of the instance, and we're setting that class variable raise amount equal to the amount that we passed in here, which is 5%. So really, us running this set raise amount method here and setting this CLS variable raise amount to the amount is the same thing as us saying employee dot raise amount equals 5%, but now we are using this class method to do that instead. Now you can run class methods from instances as well, uh, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense and I don't ever see people doing it. But to show you what that would look like, uh, I can also grab this instance here and I can run that class method from the instance. And if I run that, you can see that running that class method from the instance still changes that class variable and sets all of the, the class variable and both instance amounts to that 5% that we passed in. Now you may also hear people say that they use class methods as alternative constructors. Now what do they mean by this? So what they mean is that you can use these class methods in order to provide multiple ways of creating our objects. So let's say that for example we had someone who was using our employee class and they said, hey, I have these uh, specific use cases where I'm getting employee information in the form of a string that is separated by hyphens, and I'm constantly needing to parse the string before I create uh, new employees. 
So is there a way to just pass in a string and create an employee from that? Um, so let's go ahead. I have an example down here to where we can uh, see exactly what this problem would look like. So let's say that this is a common use case for how someone is using our class. We have three strings here that are uh, employees separated by hyphens. So we have the first name, the last name, and the salary, and they're all in a string and they're separated by hyphens. Now, if I wanted to create a new employee from this string, then what I would have to first do is I would have to split this string uh, on the hyphen and then we would have our first name, last name, and our pay. And then based on those values, we would be able to create a new employee by passing in those values and that would run our init method. So now let me go ahead and save this and run it. And you can see that this works. We're splitting the string up into a first name, last name, and pay. And then we are creating a new employee just like we did up here out of those values that we parsed from the string. And you can see that it works because we're printing out that new employee's email and pay and everything is as it should be. But if this is a common use case for how someone is using our class, then we don't want them to have to parse these strings every time that they want to create a new employee. So let's just create an alternative constructor that allows them to pass in the string and we can create the employee for them. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and create a new class method. And we're going to use this new method as an alternative constructor. And usually these start with the from, but that's just a convention also. But I'm going to call this from string. And remember that we automatically accept the class as the first argument there. And I'm just going to call this second argument employee string. And now we're just going to go ahead and parse this string for them. So exactly what we did down here, I'm just going to grab this line, first name, last name, and pay. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in our class method. But now, instead of working with this specific string, I'm going to split the string that they pass to this method. So instead of employee string one, I'm going to use this employee string argument from this method here. And down here at the bottom, we created our new employee by saying employee and then passing in uh, those variables that we got when we split. But now that we're inside of our class method, we can do the exact same thing, but now we're gonna use our class variable instead of employee, because those are the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this line here and paste it in, but now I'm gonna use this class instead of employee, since that's basically the same thing. So this line is going to create that new employee. And now that we've created that new employee, we also need to return it so that they can receive that employee object when this method is called. So I'm just going to return that new employee object. Okay, so now our alternative constructor is done. So now I can delete this line here. And now, instead of someone needing to parse the string themselves, we've provided them with this from string method that they can call. And you see here that they are just passing in this employee string one, and it comes in here and it splits that string on the hyphen and then creates a new employee object and then returns that employee object. So now if I save this and run it, you can see that we got the exact same values. So now they'd have no need to parse these strings anymore. We've provided them with a from string alternative constructor, and now they can just pass in those strings and get their new employee objects. So when people say that they use class methods as alternative constructors, then this is what they mean. Now, if you wanna see a real world example of this, then I have the date time module pulled up here, and there are several ways that we can create new date times. And if you search for class method within the date time module, then you can see an example of some of these. So the default way of creating a date time object is to say something like date time and then pass in the year, month, and date. But if we look here at these class methods, which are alternative constructors, then what they do is they have this from timestamp uh, and you can use the current time, which is today. And they have a couple of other examples here as well. And you can see that they're basically doing the same thing that we just did in our example. 
So you can see that they are accepting the class and a timestamp with this from timestamp constructor. And then they are parsing out some dates and then they're creating that new date time object and returning that. So it's a new way of creating date time objects. So that is very similar to the example that we just wrote on our own. So now if you ever see something like this in code, then you'll know what's going on. Okay, so now that we've looked at class methods, now let's talk about static methods. Now a lot of people get class methods and static methods confused. Now when working with classes, regular methods automatically pass the instance as the first argument, and we called that self. And class methods automatically pass the class as the first argument, and we called that CLS. And static methods don't pass anything automatically. Uh, they don't pass the instance or the class. So really, they behave just like regular functions, except we include them in our classes because they have some logical connection with the class. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example so that we know what we mean here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these lines here. So let's say that we wanted a simple function that would take in a date and return whether or not that was a work day. Uh, so that has a logical connection to our employee class, but it doesn't actually depend on any specific instance or class variable. So instead, I'm going to make this a static method. So to create a static method, it's just as easy as a class method. Uh, and we're also going to use a decorator. That decorator is going to be static method. So I'm going to call this method is workday. Now remember, static methods don't take the instance or the class as the first argument, so we can just pass in the arguments that we want to work with. And I'm going to take in a day here and return whether or not that is a workday. So to make this a simple example, I'm not going to do anything too complicated. I'm just going to return whether or not our day falls on a weekday. So in Python, dates have these weekday methods where Monday is equal to zero and Sunday is equal to six and all the other days in between. So if I wanted to return whether this is a weekday, then I could just say day dot weekday. If that is equal to five, well, which is a Saturday, and I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this line here and say, or if that day is equal to six, which is a Sunday, then I'm going to return false. And if it doesn't hit that conditional, then it means that it's a weekday. So I'm just going to return true. Now, sometimes people write regular methods or class methods that actually should be static methods. And usually a giveaway that a method should be a static method is if you don't access the instance or the class anywhere within the function. So say that I had this class method up here. Uh, you can see that I'm using that class variable there. But if I wasn't using it anywhere within that method, then it probably doesn't need to be a class method. And the same with regular methods. If you're not using that self variable, then it's probably, you probably want to check and see if that would be appropriate to use a static method in that place. Okay, so now let's go down here and see if our static method is working. So I'm just going to go ahead and uncomment out these couple of lines here. And all I'm doing here is I'm importing the date time module and then I'm creating a new date. And if I wanted to use our new static method here that checks whether this date is a weekday, then I can just print out the employee.isWorkday and pass in that date. So if I run that, oh, and I got an error there because whenever I copied and pasted, I forgot to take out this second if. I really want that to say if the weekday is equal to five or the weekday is equal to six. So now if I save that and run it, then you can see that this day that I passed in is false because that's actually a Sunday. Now if I replace this with the 11th and run that, now you can see that it's a Monday. So you can see that is workday returns true. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. In this video, we learned the difference between regular instance methods class methods, which can also be used as alternative constructors, and static methods, which don't operate on the instance or the class. So I hope all of that made sense to everyone. But if you do have any questions about anything that we covered, then feel free to ask in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer those. In the next tutorial, we'll start looking at inheritance and how we can make subclasses.
Now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. Uh, the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, then you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.